Good morning you guys and welcome back to Summit Railway, the channel where you can see me building a garden railroad from scratch. So some time ago I've told you about the Muscle Digital System and today I want to talk about this, the Muscle DMAX Navigator. We are going to discuss some basic functions for beginners, so let's get right into it. Before we talk about the functionality of the DMAX Navigator, we should quickly talk about the different options you've got. So right here I've got a navigator and on the bottom of it you can see a plug. This plug receives the DMAX bus cable which then connects to your central station. Every navigator is capable of being connected via cable. Next off we have their old wireless system. It was um, produced in two versions, the standard version and the plus version, which you can identify uh, by this antenna on top of the navigator. The plus version should have more reach out in the garden, up to about 100 meters they claimed. About two years ago they've introduced their new 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless system which can be used all over the world, regardless where you are. And it should have similar reach. So I've got the new version right here. To power on the navigator, you can either plug it in via the cable or you turn it around, open the battery slot and insert some AA batteries. Then close it up again and now we are ready to roll. So press the F button for two seconds and it will boot up. Now we can have a look at the display. In the upper lane it states Navigator 1, which is important when you want to run several navigators on the same central station, then every navigator has to have a different number in order to function properly. Next is the battery status and in the far corner you can see that we are connected wirelessly to the central station. In the center part you can type in your digital address of the locomotive in question and on the bottom you can see system informations. To the left is the maximum amperage that the central station can offer. In the middle you have the actual amperage which is used right now and on the right there is a percentage of the maximum amperage that you can use. So those are some good informations in certain situations. On the bottom you have three function fields which are used by pressing each uh, button. Now that we are already connected to the central station, we can start and type in the digital address in question and enter it with the OK button. Now the screen has changed. We have all the digital functions uh, displayed up here. We have the digital address 204 and we have the direction of travel and a speed scale. So now we can start and use the locomotive. You can see I can speed up the speed scale uh, says, says we are on 14, the direction of travel is displayed and the locomotive is moving. If I now press the 9 button um, we have front lights and this goes for all the other functions like function number one is the horn and we can stop the locomotive again. To use the function uh, buttons from 9 to 16 you have to press the function, the big function button on the bottom and now you can see uh, function 9 to 16 is available. Now button 1 um, is function number 9 and so on. Um, to go back to the normal functions from 1 to 8 you press this function button again and you can see up here function 1 to 8 is active and now button 1 
button number one is the horn again. Mustard also has to offer a neat feature which they call second function. You can access it by pressing M1 twice and now the lower screen has changed to a page where you can control switches and signals which are digitally controlled. If you press M1 twice again um, you are now on the locomotive page which allows you to type in the digital address of a second locomotive and you can, can confirm it by pressing the right arrow here and now you are able to completely independently from the first locomotive uh, control a second locomotive. So by pressing right here you can speed up to level 7 in the forward direction. If you press once in the center it goes to neutral and if you use the left arrow you can speed up in the backward direction completely independent independent of the first locomotive as you can see right here if you have dialed in the second locomotive and you press one of the function buttons the second locomotive reacts if you want to uh, use the function buttons for the upper locomotive you have to press this function button once and now here, uh, up on top it changed to function 1 to 8 and if you press you now can control the other locomotive. If you want to go back again you press M1. Now you are on the second function again and you control the functions of the second locomotive. Now, if you're like me and you like double-headed or triple-headed trains, Mustard has a function for that as well. Let me show you. If you want to run double-headed trains, you first of all have to tell the digital system which locomotives are involved. To do that, we are going to the menu by pressing M3. We are scrolling down to Automatic Programmieren. We are pressing OK. We are going down to Traktion, we are pressing OK and now it's asking me about the number of the traction. I will use number 1 um, since I've already programmed it in. Uh, when I now press OK it will say the digital address of the first locomotive. You can type in whatever your address of the locomotive is. Uh, you can do that for 4 locomotives at the most. I'm finished with those two locomotives and now I'm leaving this menu by pressing M3. To now run this double-headed train I will go back to the menu. I will choose lock traction and now uh, it goes automatically to the first traction I've programmed in, which are those two locomotives. And now we can test it. To go back to the normal operation mode you simply press M3, you choose the first option which means operating a single locomotive, you press OK and you are back at the standard page to operate a single locomotive. As you can tell right now this navigator is lit up pretty nicely. This is especially a great feature when operating at night, but I recommend to shut off the lights as often as possible to conserve battery life when operating wirelessly. To do that we go to the menu by pressing M3, we scroll down with the M1 button to Navigator Configuration, then I will press M2 and now the first option we've got is lighting. Right now it's on setting number 2 which means we have the screen light on, we have the dial lit up and we have the keyboard lit up. 
if I press M2 once, uh, we have the same features, only a little bit dimmed, so it's not as bright. This is my favorite option for nighttime operation. If I press M2 again, all the lights are shut off. This is my favorite setting for daytime operation. And if I press M2 again, we have only a screen light and the dial is lit up. No keyboard lights at all. If I press M2 again, we are at the start. Um, all the lights are on at full blast and I will use this setting to record the video so that you can see better. To go back to the main page, I press M3 and we are back to the main page. All right, now you are familiar with some of the basic features of the DMAX Navigator that will get you started. If you have any more questions, feel free to write them down in the comment section. I may be able to answer the questions or I make a second video about this theme. Otherwise, I hope you have enjoyed this video and we will see us in the next one. Bye!